Hello everyone, welcome to freepilotgroundschool.ca, the preparatory ground instruction. My name is Francis Hain, I'll be your guide uh, through these uh, preparatory ground instructions. So this is just an introductory uh, material on how these preparatory ground instruction uh, lessons work. So uh, let's just talk uh, briefly, freepilotgroundschool.ca. Uh, this was designed to teach the theoretical aspects of flight training. It's not a substitute for training with an instructor. The whole idea, this was my COVID project. Uh, everything was shut down. So I just figured, well, people still want to do something that has to do with aviation. So I just took all my presentations, digitized them, put them online. And uh, over time, I just kind of worked worked on that. So these these lessons will definitely not teach you to fly an airplane. So uh, you'll, you'll learn theoretical aspects, but please don't think that you can watch these lessons and then hop in an airplane and fly an airplane yourself. You, you absolutely need to go to a flying school. You need to get a flying instructor and, and do that. Because honestly, if, and I'm being dead serious, if you think just by watching these videos that you can just hop in an airplane and go flying, you will crash through the airplane. It's just, it's like doing brain surgery and by watching YouTube, it's just, it, things will end very badly. So if you go on freepilotgroundschool.ca, I have the training syllabus that I use, uh, and it's divided into a number of different segments uh, for the private pilot license. So first off, we have our pre-solo segment, and in the pre-solo, we do some basic maneuvers, just learn how to do straight and level flight, climbs, descent, turns. Then we do some upper air work, so that's what we call steep turns, slow flight, stall spins, things that we have to be high up uh, to do these maneuvers. And then lastly, we do circuits, our takeoffs and landings, until you get competent and you're comfortable flying the aircraft by yourself. At that point, you're going to do a first solo. You're going to take the airplane, you're going to fly it by yourself. After that, you're going to do some specialty circuits. You're going to learn how to do uh, takeoffs and landings in short fields and soft fields. This is a combination of dual instruction and solo. Then you're going to do practice area work. You're going to do um, upper air work, uh, both dual and solo. Uh, so going back to the, uh, what we call the practice area uh, and doing steep turns, slow flight. And you're going to do that with an instructor until you're uh, safe for solo. And then you're going to do that solo. You're also going to do lower air work. So precautionary and forced approaches. That's where you kind of down low to the ground, learning how to fly the aircraft uh, if the engine quits. At that point, I highly recommend that you do your recreational pilot flight test. And the reason I say that is you never know what's going to happen. So I had students, uh, they were kind of at this point in their training, then COVID hit and all of a sudden everything shut down and they can't fly by themselves because the, the flying school shut down. And so had they just done their recreational pilot flight test, they could have at least gone flown by themselves and gotten some limited privileges on their way to their private pilot license. So this recreational uh, pilot permit, uh, think of it as a student pilot permit, but you're allowed taking a passenger along and you do not need to be supervised by an instructor. After you do that recreational pilot flight test, uh, you're going to do some dual and solo cross country. You're going to learn how to navigate and, and go uh, to different destinations that are you know, far away, 100 miles away uh, from where you took off. And you're also going to learn how to practice uh, flying under instruments. So in case you ever get stuck in cloud or in fog, that you don't end up a, a statistic. At that point, you uh, will complete your private pilot license flight test. And uh, that will give you privileges. You are now a fully licensed pilot. So let's talk about what is PGI. PGI is preparatory ground instruction. So your flight training is broken up into three aspects. Or th uh, the, the first one is ground school. So we learn about the theoretical aspects of aviation. So uh, you've already seen, hopefully, on freepilotgroundschool.ca, we talk about air law, meteorology, navigation, theory of flight systems, that sort of thing. Some of the stuff's pretty boring and dry, but you have to know it. It's just the way it is. Then, of course, everyone loves flight training, right? That's where you actually get to touch the controls and you fly the airplane and it's really fun. Uh, sometimes it's frustrating, but it's mostly fun. But unfortunately, it's also expensive by the time you add up all the costs associated with operating an airplane that costs $100,000 and um, the maintenance costs and the insurance, it's like $5,000 a year and everything. It, it's, it's kind of expensive, but it is the most fun. And then we have something called preparatory ground instruction. And that's what these series of lectures are. And so preparatory ground instruction is the flight training on the ground. It's uh, 
It's where you learn uh, what you're going to be doing in the air. And we do this because it's uh, both a more effective teaching method. So you, you're not paying attention to flying, you're paying attention to what you have to do. It's also way less uh, money than than learning how to, f or than doing the flight training. So if let's say I do a PGI and it takes me 20 minutes, well, I'd, I'd much rather teach you how to do, let's say a steep turn uh, on the ground uh, with this video, and then you can go practice it in the air than just me starting everything from scratch uh, in the air and you're just wasting 20 minutes of expensive flight time uh, to do that, okay? But uh, it's important to know that for every lesson that you're going to learn on the ground, you sh you're going to be doing preparatory ground instruction uh, first to teach you what you're doing on the ground. So let's talk about uh, successful flight training. And uh, first off, how do you, how can you make sure that you're going to be successful and meet your goals uh, for your flight training? So first off, prepare. So show up uh, with your lesson, having watched this, uh, having watched these lectures uh, and these videos, Read the flight training, the assigned uh, lesson ahead of time and understand it so that when you show up with your instructor, he just asks you or she just asks you like a few questions like, oh, this person already knows all this stuff on the ground. Let's just go flying uh, as opposed to just having to waste a bunch of time. So that, that's the, kind of the number one key to success. The second thing is you want to fly often. Uh, you, you and people often ask me, how often should I fly? And I say as much as you can. Ideally, think of your flight training the same as you would treat a college or university uh, course of study for a half a year or something like that. Dedicate your life to it. And the reason I say that is because you'll waste less time. It'll be cheaper for you if you just set aside, let's say, two months even uh, to do it. So you're flying as much as you can. If the weather's bad, you're at home, you're studying. Uh, and the reason for that is because you have to review. You, you do forget things. So on a typical flight, uh, you might fly for an hour and 10 minutes of that hour is review. Well, if you haven't flown for a month, it might be 20 or 30 minutes that's review, and which means you might only have 10 minutes for learning new material. And uh, well, that, that becomes, that gets expensive over the long run uh, pretty quick. Uh, take notes, especially on your debriefing. Note your areas of improvement. So if you take a look at the uh, private pilot uh, training program. Uh, each flight uh, should, uh, you should be following that syllabus for each flight. And uh, there's an area where you can make make notes. And so when you land with the instructor, they'll tell you what you need to work on. You can put those notes in and just kind of review them after flight. It's especially important on uh, solo flights. And so one thing that I tell students to do is after they get back, uh, I've given them let's say a series of exercises that they have to complete uh, while solo. And I'll get them to come back and then I'll say, okay, look at the flight test guide. And you can download that on freepilotgroundschool.ca or the Transport Canada website. Look at the flight test guide and the criteria and tell me what mark you would have given yourself. Did you make any major errors, any minor errors? And you kind of critique yourself and learn how to do that. And then lastly, uh, you want to select an instructor that works well with you. Okay, so if you are, sometimes you might be at a small school and you're just kind of given, there's only one instructor or two instructors. But uh, there's all sorts of different types of students and there's all sorts of different types of instructors. So not every instructor will be good for every student. So just for me example, I generally tend to be an impatient kind of person. I force feed students. Uh, if somebody's really motivated and sharp, I can probably get them done faster than, well, any other instructor that I've met, to be honest with you. But uh, for some students that just take more time and need more patience uh, and handholding, I'm not, I'm not there, I'm not the ideal instructor for them. And so they should find another instructor. And so you should be the same way as if, if you, if you're one of these students that shows up prepared and you know everything there is to know, um, or well, maybe you don't want to get too arrogant, but you know what I'm saying. And, and, and you're at like 15 hours and the instructor still doesn't want to let you land, or even you're at like five hours or something and, and you've done all the work. Well, it might be, it might be time for you to go get together with an instructor, talk to the chief flight instructor. And, uh, it might be better that you just go with an instructor that can kind of keep up with you. And, and likewise, if you're, if you're finding that you're having some difficulty, you're, you're doing, putting the preparation in, but it's not, it's just not coming together for you. 
uh, and you find your instructor just kind of being too fast and, and impatient with you, well, just ask for another instructor. Try to fly with somebody that's more patient. And, and everyone has their different personalities. So uh, that's, in a nutshell, how to be, um, how to have a, a successful flight training. So anyway, if you got through the ground school videos in your uh, on freepilotgroundschool.ca, you'll notice I had a lot of uh, little stamps, uh, boring, useless, because the truth is there is boring and useless information in that stuff. But these preparatory ground instructions have none of that. There are no boring or useless uh, stamps that I've put in here, because hopefully the material is not boring. I might be boring because I'm just Maybe some people think I'm a boring kind of person, like my children. Um, but uh, the information is definitely not useless. Uh, the information is very important, and I, I really hope you prepare well and and really take the information that that I present uh, seriously, uh, because this is information that's going to save you. Uh, you know, in some you know, even if you're if you're reading it, going like, when will I ever need to know this? And then one day you will need to know it. So an example uh, for the commercial pilot license or the airline transport pilot license, one of the things you have to learn is like finding a sun's true bearing, which everyone looks at and it's like, well, when would I ever need to use this? This is so stupid and useless. Uh, and then one time in my career, I had to use it and I was glad I knew how to do it because I was in the middle of the Arctic and I had to use this finding the sun's true bearing because like a whole bunch of stuff failed in my aircraft. Um, cause you're so far North, the compass doesn't work. Uh, and then my GPS failed and, uh, I think a couple more, another navigation aid failed. It's like a partial electrical failure. So I had to use this sun's true bearing and thankfully I remembered how to do it. And I was able to kind of dead reckon my way home and figure out how to get home. So uh, yeah, that's that. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I, I hope you're going to enjoy these preparatory ground instructions. And uh, I encourage you, uh, you know, if you're interested in flying, uh, watch these prior uh, to your lesson and do these kind of together with uh, your flight training. So your ground school, you can get done completely without ever getting in an airplane, but these ones you wanna do concurrently. So uh, when your instructor says, okay, your next flight, you're gonna do stalls and spins, let's just say. Well, watch these videos prior, uh, pay attention to the demonstrations so you know what to expect and, and, then, and then read in your flight training manual. So thanks for joining me on this journey. I wish you all the best on your flight training. And uh, we will see you in the next lecture where we will talk about preparation for flight.